Okay, thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. This is nature set, num nature sheet number 16, okay? And in this video, I, I utilize um, the different elements, the different designs from this set to uh, talk about kind of um, structures as far as them being a, kind of a focal point of your scene where you can stamp them, how you can stamp them, how they're all interchangeable, and how to blend in surrounding elements around these focal points. I usually, you know, with something like these, you want to kind of plan a little bit ahead of time. I don't really plan for little things like, you know, these little rocks right here or something like that, or even kind of these little people and filler stamps of this sort, you know? Those are things that are so small that I can kind of uh, compose and place them after I've stamped everything else out. But when you're talking about a structure, it's something that you're probably going to want to have, you know, play an integral part as far as the structuring of your uh, scene. A lot of times it becomes about those stamps, so you'll want to stamp those off first and place things around them uh, for the most part, okay? That's not always how you have to work, you know, it's not some kind of fixed process, but that I, that's a way that I think works out pretty um, easily for you in terms of um, kind of the notion on where to start. You know, I start off with my, you know, my main subjects, you know, usually as far as anchor points within a scene and structures happen to be that, okay? They're often um, kind of outlines, you know, um, they happen to have open areas like this. So let's say, for example, I had a mountain stamped down there already. If I stamped, you know, that old barn right over the top of it, then I would have some of that mountain in the background showing right through my barn. So you have to stamp the barn first, mask it off, and then stamp your background around it. All right. So anyway, um, I don't know. These are the elements that are all on this sheet right here. I was going to pop this open, but I had each one of these in, most of them in wood-mounted form. So I just used the wood-mounted form, but they're all the same size. Okay. So anyways, I hope this comes in handy for your, um, you know, for those new to scenic stamping and they're thinking about, um, you know, what types of elements they want to start off with, or if you have any of these structure stamps um, in your collection, or any other types of structures. You know, th these concepts here apply to pretty much any type of uh, structural element um, that you might have. It doesn't even have to be stampscapes either, okay? But uh, how you utilize all these other images around it. So um, a lot of grass, a lot of, I didn't show you how to do it in snow, sky, background and foreground. All right. So anyways, if you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section, and I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, let's take a look at some different compositional um, possibilities with uh, nature sheet number 16. I was going to pop this open, and it's the cling foam version, um, but I have all of these stamps. Um, in wood mounted or unmounted form already in my demo collection, so I'm just going to use those. But um, anyways, this is just a collection of uh, different structures. Structures tend to be probably, a, I would say, a secondary focal point in the scene if you have something like people uh, somewhere within your scene uh, without people or something like, I don't know, let's say an exploding volcano in the background or something like that. The viewer's eye would tend to, you know, go to a structure, it would tend to land on a structure if you have something like that within a scene. It doesn't matter if it's an 11 by, you know, 17 scene or something like that. If you have something kind of uh, uh, man-made or whatever within a scene, your eye will tend to go to it. And going back to my idea of focal points, if you have an 11 by 17 scene, no matter how busy it gets to, um, let's say we have one little person in there, your eye would tend to rest on it. It would just be attracted to it as, you know, at the end of the visual path, probably. And that's probably where the, uh, the viewer's eye would go to directly um, upon repeated viewing, I would guess. I don't know. Living things tend to be that way. Um, it's like people, then, you know, clothes second place would probably be a structure or something like that. Maybe an animal, too, okay? Animals would be a, a strong focal point. We can have a gigantic forest of 50 trees in a scene or something like that, and mountains and everything like that. But if you have a little flying, you know, thing of birds, you know, 
people tend to focus in on that or, you know, like I said, you know, that volcano's erupting right now, but if I put, you know, and I spotlit a little bit of a little gecko or something like that crawling along the ground or a horse, you know, we probably focus in on that thing and say, you know, would there be this kind of notion of a, you know, I hope that, uh, you know, that animal gets out of there okay. But anyways, let's take a look at some of these fo um, structural, you know, focal points, points of interest, I guess we can say. If it isn't the focal point, it'd be a point of interest, certainly within a scene. And let's see how these can be used. Okay, now this is just going to be a stamp sketch video, and... Um, you know, with something like this, it is wide open. You can do practically anything with any one of these structures. You can put them in any kind of a setting, and, you know, no two settings really have to be uh, different from one another. So there's not, I mean, like this one right here, this is a water mill, so I would probably put it along some kind of water path. Okay, this is the water site. Well, let's just get into it here. This is the water site bluff. Okay. And then there's a right and left side of it. I think I did a, a dedicated video to um, elements that have a right and left side to them. They could be used just independently from one another, or they can be used in conjunction with one another, depending on the size of your scene, okay? All right, so there's the bluff on the, uh, the left-hand side. All right. And let's take a look at this water mill if you wanted to. You can certainly color this water mill uh, in multiple tones if you want uh, the impression to have multiple tones in it. You know, like the trees you want to be green and the the uh, structure to be brown or something like that. Um, I don't have to color on the stamp those types of colors, okay? Now, maybe with the trees I would color those ones green on the stamp, but the rest of it is kind of a fill-in. So usually I just stamp the main structure and everything else in black, and then I'll go in and I'll add my color after the impression if I wanted, you know, multiple tones in here. All right? So anyways, we have my trusty sedge filler stamp right here. We have all this area out here to the side, okay? to fill in some more. Uh, let's see, we have this area in the background here, and we might want to add some more trees. You can add uh, like these row of oaks back here if you want to. Um, you can add a kind of a more isolated tree back here. Let's do something like this. This is a maple pear. I really like my maple pear. I don't use it too often, I guess, you know, but uh, I just used it in some stamp sketches and wanted to use it a little bit more here. I just, I don't know, I'm using all the stamps that I already had out of my desk, so I figured it'd be a good time to, uh, to use it. Okay, now I masked off some of that, uh, the trunk area of those trees. Now let's use this kind of in its entirety. Uh, as far as the trunk goes, but let's stamp it off the paper over this way. And that would represent something a little bit closer to us. If I wanted another, another layer of those trees in back of that one, I'd just mask that off and do something like that. Okay, so that provides a really nice foundation for um, an, uh, you know your composition. I could put more water ripples in here or something of that sort, but let's add a little bit of depth to this scene. Okay, we have that uh, grassy area down here, okay? I like to really push the depth within my scene. So I'd like to add something kind of close to me. And I'll do it in the form of some additional reeds down here. I'll stamp them in kind of multiple angles and overlap a little bit. Okay, and I usually leave a little bit of an opening for the viewer to enter the scene, okay? All right, now, that's the land area. I mean, if you wanted to kind of establish some sort of um, thing in the sky, it could just be colors up here. You can streak on some colors or whatnot. You can make it a day or nighttime scene. There could be a sun up there. You could have a bolt of lightning if you wanted to, but 
Oh, let's just let's just take my uh, cloud key. Okay, I, I don't remember if I cleaned the stamp off or not. It was in my to be cleaned pile, so I probably didn't wash it off. <sighs> I just use water whenever I'm uh, cleaning my stamps. Nothing fancy. Okay, it looks like I, the last time I used the stamp, it was with a similar color, so I didn't really need to wash it off, but I just didn't want to ink it up in blue, then stamp it out and it looks like black or something like that. Sometimes I, that's how I get my kind of best color schemes once in a while, <laughs> you know, from unexpected uh, residual color from the previous uh, Stamping. Okay, now this one right here, I'm going to try avoiding that rooftop a little bit. But I'll, if I have some of that blue in that uh, roof, it's not really going to matter. Okay? Alright, so we have something like that. If you want to get kind of, you know, create kind of an interesting uh, little effect, what you can do is you can blot that off and go for a lighter kind of impression in the water like that and create this kind of reflective quality and then you can add an additional tones down there and have that kind of cloud uh, cumulus stamp um, as a sub layer and kind of more subtle texture you know uh, reflecting that uh, sky up there so anyway see I got some of that blue in that rooftop but I'd be coloring that brown over the top of that and that blue is kind of light anyways so it won't you know read as a cloud in the rooftop uh, in the end result anyway so you could mask it but not really any need to and I'm sure there's some blue in these treetops here but once you color them with a little bit of green or whatever color you're going to be coloring them in it'll all just kind of blend out anyways so really don't need to mask that, but there's your foundation, and there's your focal point right there. I know I don't have anything colored in right now, but even if I colored all these different tones, you can see that, you know, this would really be the focal point of the scene. All right. Um, let's do that one again, I guess, while I have it out. And um, let's see here. Let's try... Let's try to put it in a, a little bit of a different setting, I guess. Now you can be stamping these on, I'm just stamping on the glossy cardstock because that's what I have you know, a lot of right here, but um, you can stamp it out on matte paper if you're going to do chalks or colored pencil. You're not going to want to do it on uh, glossy cardstock because it's, you know, it doesn't have any tooth to it and it might kind of resist something like colored pencil, you know, certainly. Pastels and chalks won't stick to that, so you'll want to do it on something um, with more texture. You can certainly do that. Okay, that was the snowy creek, so I'm just saying you can kind of alter this a little bit. Yeah, you know, maybe that's the first snow of the year or something like that, but um, oh, let's just place this right here. Okay, there's this mill at the end of the creek right there. Yeah, there, yeah there'd be probably more water, but I don't know, maybe there's snow that filled in for right now. And let's see here. I, we can use that sedge filler stamp again too, and it's not really going to make that big of a difference, but I'll just use my snow texture. It doesn't have any of that kind of grassier type of, you know, uh, texturing to it. It's just more of a plain textural stamp. It could be used as sand as well. Okay, and I'll just put that back here, like that. If I want to add some here in the foreground, I can do that as well. Like that. Okay. So there's your foundation. And then we have that area to fill in on the sides. You, you know, we could use that same stamp. Uh, like the maple pear, but um, eh, let's keep it a little bit more. Uh, let's see. No. Okay, I don't have my other. I don't have my real small oak tree out. 
Right there's a smaller version that would look really great in the background. Let's do something like this. Let's say this oak tree is uh, kind of in the snow. One of the things I like to do is I like to wipe off the bottom of the trunks where it would be going into the snow, okay? So we're saying that the snow, there, there's a little bit of depth to it. That's the same thing if I was doing, doing a, uh, an animal or a person walking through the snow, I would probably wipe off the bottom of their feet so that it looks like they're in the snow and not kind of just walking along the surface of like concrete or something. All right, and I'll put this kind of in the foreground because it represents something a little bit closer to us in terms of scale. I guess it could go back, but you're saying that, you know, that's probably the largest, you know, if I stamped it higher, it'd be like a super, super big, it would represent a super big uh, tree in the background in relation to this, because things that are usually higher up usually represent something a little bit farther back. Okay, tree like that. wipe it off again. Let's put one on the other side for a little bit of uh, balance. Okay, I'll put it roughly about like right here maybe. Okay, put something like that. And I'm not going to do grass in here because uh, you know, we have all that snow-covered area. But, how about kind of a larger branch here? Yeah, this one's a little bit foliated, but who cares? And we'll say that we have something really close to us and we're looking in on the scene, okay? And this is just oak branch. It used to be my favorite kind of uh, foreground element, just because you can use certain portions of it, you can use it kind of lighter. Maybe I'll do that. I'll use the lighter area of it. There's a lighter area of it right here, and there's a heavier area of it right here. You can use it on the left and right side. I could have had it overhanging too, like that. Still could, but eh, I don't know if I'll do that. So there's our kind of lead-in. It is a visual lead-in, like um, creeks and things like that. Then when you stamp something to the left and right side, it really reinforces this idea of a lead-in, a visual lead-in. It's something that kind of welcomes the viewer into the scene and sucks them back into the scene, you know, for, I don't know, investigation. You, know, you kind of give them a little bit of a path to go in there and wander about and, you know, explore the, the scene that you've created. Okay, so we have that. I mean, I could stamp that cloud in the background if I wanted to. Let's say there's um, kind of a heavier kind of a... Um, kind of sky, then something light and airy and blue. Let's say there's something a little bit more blue-gray. Uh, I'm just going to use the memento. Maybe I'll use the Marvy one. My Marvy one's a little bit darker. And I'm saying that because I have some blue on here from the previous. I don't think I cleaned it off, so I'm just going to get that. Maybe I'll get some kind of fusion of blue and gray in this impression. Okay. All right, now let's say you saw me stamp this kind of right side up. Let's say that this cloud is kind of hovering above, and it'll be bottom lit okay this time so I'll do this right here let's take a look and see what it looks like upside down like that now I'm wiping off the bottom portion of it where that darker area is okay sometimes if you wipe off the edges of your sky figures and I have a video on that as well it'll kind of create a nice transition into your open areas or lighter areas, okay? So there you have it. All right, that's a nice foundation for whatever you want to do. There's a little bit of a different spirit to it than this. Maybe this is the same location, but this is uh, kind of more winter time. This could be spring. It's kind of fun to work in. I know on this one I did vertical, and this one I did, you know, landscape, but if you do kind of 
a similar composition like this, and then maybe with the elements of this one, you know, again here, do all of them that way. It's kind of fun to do something, you know, in terms of the seasons. You can do three really identical compositions, use different colors, and uh, kind of um, arrange them in a triptych. Okay, it looks like, you know, a series of three pieces, but they can represent different seasons, different times of day, whatever, different weather. All right. Okay, so that's some examples of the water mill. Okay. Um, let's take a look at... Now, all of the foundations that I'm doing, the um, Snowy Creek, the Waterside Bluff, you know, any one of these can be interchanged with any structure here, okay? So you can just get kind of foundational ideas for um, these different structures, and like I said, they're all completely interchangeable. Um, okay, let's see. Let's go on. Okay, this one we already done. The water mill. I'll move that out of my way. Let's do something with the old mill, okay? Looks like a cabinet, but it's kind of more of a mill. Kind of set amongst uh, the pine trees. All right, so this is a quarter page scene. This one's a smaller one now. Uh, well, it's the same size as that. It's more of like a two by three inch uh, type of stamp if it, if it were to be mounted on wood. All right, here's the thing. You can see it right here. If you're new to scenic stamping, of course, let's say we have a quote stamp and we want to stamp it in the sky, then you're, of course you're going to leave more room for it, okay? But if you no know, quote stamp or something like that, or if you don't want too much sky, then we stamp it higher and we have more water down here. You stamp it midway and have an equal amount of sky and water. Or we can stamp it down here and you can have a lot of sky. Let's say I wanted to stamp uh, a mountain behind here. Well, then I probably want to leave more room for it, or if you want to stamp a mountain and some sky above it, a sun or something like that, or a bolt of lightning or whatnot, then we're going to leave room for it, you know, accordingly, okay? So let's do it a couple different ways. Um, let's leave, uh, let's do a really simplistic type of uh, composition right here. Let's say we're stamping... Uh, some sort of a birthday card, and we have a stamp that says happy birthday, okay? Let's just stamp that down here. We have the sides uh, to fill in. Let's go with the um, sedge filler, okay? Oh, let's see, do I have my small, eh, I have some smaller pine trees, but, um, Let's just go with this one. This is the pine row. All right, let's mask off some of that um, sedge filler to the right. Okay, and I'll just plant these trees down like so. And I'm planting them kind of into that grass like that. All right, and let's do some on the left side of the page. Okay. I'll mask off that cabin a little bit. I'll have some of these pine trees like that. Okay, see that right there? And I could put some of these pine trees in the foreground if I want to as well. Why not do that? Let's keep this one really simple. Not that all of the compositions are simple, but this will just basically be two stamps used for both background and foreground um, imagery. I don't know if those trees are, you know, formally background. They're kind of mid-ground now, but uh, smaller trees and closer trees, okay? I guess I should say. Let's put some of these more like this. visual lead-in, too. That will entryway into that area. Something, let's let's do something right here. I'll show you what to do, uh, what you can do with um, imagery as well, just using 
um, value to create a little bit of depth. Let's take these trees right here. Let's stamp them out once, okay? And I stamped it out pretty firmly. But let's take this paper towel and I'll wipe off the bottom pretty good. Okay, I'm wiping off quite a bit of the ink, if not all of it. And then as I move up, I'm using taking off a little bit less ink, so I'm using less pressure, okay? So taking a good amount off the bottom, moving up and taking a little bit less, so I'm transitioning it. It's already kind of medium because I've already stamped it once. Most of the ink, or all of the ink off, most of the ink off, and then I'll just leave it as is up top there. And let's go for something like this. And then you suddenly you get background trees, okay? And you see where it transitions off into a lighter impression, and that's so it doesn't impede uh, the look or the, uh, the definition of the foreground trees. It, uh, not impede, but obscure, sorry. All right, let's do that again. I really like that look right there. You can see it's just using the same ink. You can do this with everything. In theory, you can take any ink that you have, all right, and you can achieve every value of that ink from its pure form and most saturated form down to nothing just by the amount that you use of it. And that's what I do with my uh, stylus tool applications all the time. Okay, let me see, let me blot this off first. Okay, wiping it off really good at the base. And as I move up, I'm taking off a little bit less, taking a good amount off the bottom portion though. Okay, stamping it out. And let me see, let me cover up that little uh, mill down there. Okay, so suddenly we have a much more heavily forested scene using the same stamp. Same stamp used back there as here as here. Okay, that's just working it around that uh, mill. And then you have room of here, you know, happy birthday or something like that, or wish you were here, you know. It'd be kind of a fun kind of sentiment, maybe. Let's do something right here. Let's leave room for a sentiment up there. Let's take our cloud stamp again. I'll show you what you do with that if you're working it around some kind of um, word. Happy birthday, um, whatever. Okay, I'm taking this, I'm wiping it off on the top, stamped it out, and, or colored it with my blue. Okay. See how that really transitions off like that? Really nice and soft by removing some of that ink right here. So I'm doing the same thing that I did with um, the oak uh, by the, the pine row. I just removed it off the bottom here. This one right here, I removed it off the top. But the, look at this. See the, how these clouds are kind of illuminated on one side? I'm always going to have that facing in. So every time I make an impression of it, I'll face it in to the um, middle of the scene, the interior, because that's where I intend to put the sentiment. If I am going to, going to put that, it could just be this kind of little area in the sky, you know, with the light shining down on the cabin. Be like a really air. All right, it's a mill, but um, I don't know. It's kind of like a really welcoming kind of visual for that um, little cabin. It's like a an ideal location, you know, with that light kind of shining on it illuminating it. Okay, and you see what that's just doing by l wiping off all that area. Look how interior, look how central, uh, how centrally, maybe not centrally, I don't know. I was going to say centrally illuminated, but I'm not sure if it is. It's just, I don't know, uh, directly illuminated maybe. I'm not thinking about all these things when I'm stamping. I only try to kind of put into words when I'm doing these videos. So I'm kind of at a loss for words a lot, a lot, a lot of times about what I'm trying to uh, or what I'm doing in them. So you have to forgive me there. 
Okay. Last one, right about like here. Okay. So look at that. This is kind of a fun little foundation. We can have this area in here. I would kind of darken the perimeter right here, kind of bringing light into that interior. And I can have that lighting down here. I can darken this area and have this area illuminated. I like to leave my waterways and uh, visual lead-ins a little bit lighter, be it a path or a road or, in this case, a creek. And uh, it would lead right up to that cabin right there. And color that up, not too dark, but a little bit of brown or something like that on, on that would look really good with a little bit of a darker brown um, on the sides so that it looks like that rooftop is illuminated and it would really um, reinforce this idea of top lighting like that, okay? Just a little bit of tone around here like that, tone around here like that, and it really brings your eye directly to that as a focal point. All right. So, this little stamp right here, if it was on something like this really long piece, okay, this is the half page, 11 inches, you can have this over here, but you would just have to fill in more with additional trees or something like that, or you can have something else out here. Maybe there's a, uh, a lake, or you put the waterside bluff here, so it creates another body of water on this side, you need to put additional pine trees. All right. Alright, after this video, just like uh, a couple of videos previously, I did uh, six or seven compositions in, in the ensuing composition uh, videos. I just, uh, I colored them all. <laughs> and I'm not going to do that for this. I'm not going to color, like, if I do color some of these, I'm not going to do it in one video. I'll do it one at a time, I think. Alright, that was the old mill. Let's take a look at, um, I don't know, it could be any one of these. Let's do, let's do this um, little barn. This is the old barn. Comes in a larger size, but it wouldn't fit on this sheet here, so I put the smaller one in there. And let's do something with that. Um, let's create um, some sort of foundation for that. I'm thinking of what I haven't done yet. Let's do this. Let's create a little bit of a pond, okay? Which way do we want to do this? Do we want to do it vertical or horizontal? Let's do it two different ways, okay? Um, this is the pond stamp. If you don't color the, uh, the water area, a certain watery color, it can certainly just be dirt, you know, in there. So it's not, you're not uh, stuck with anything. Okay, let's do it a couple different ways here. We'll, we'll go um, portrait and landscape and see what the benefits of having kind of, you know, one or the other would be. I mean, it doesn't have to be one benefit over another or something like that. Just, uh, the possibilities tend to open up if you have something that's taller, you know, like skies or something of that sort. Okay, where's my sedge filler stamp? Filling that around it. You can do multiple impressions of the of the, uh, the pond as well. It works uh, very well uh, in repetition. Okay, something of that sort. Uh, let's see. Let me take this old barn. You know, what I might do is I might kind of wipe off the bottom a little bit. So 
so it creates kind of a softer transition into this. And it, uh, I mean, this one's going to represent something, the barn will represent something that's farther off, you know, than this pond right here, you know, we're going to walk, to, you know, you would have a pond right at the foot of that, but there it is in the background. Okay, now we have this area to the side of that, right? Let's take the sedge filler and we'll put it is now sitting within that space. Okay, no need to mask it off either. I, you know, I mean, you could do this, you know, have this as kind of a working farm or something like that, but um, I probably use it more as like a kind of a relic, you know, in, in, a, in a, you know, an empty field more than I do. Uh, Kind of a working farm uh, type of structure, but um, you know, if it is a kind of a working one, that's kind of they're not really keeping it up because it's missing a few of the panels on the side. So kind of growing up where I did in California, Central California, there was a lot of uh, old structures, kind of you know, sitting around in fields, and you kind of saw it. Actually, a lot of them are still standing, but you know little bit, you know, kind of wobbly in terms of uh, the uh, stability, I would think, at this point in time. A lot of them are still up there, though. All right, so I've kind of set it amongst the uh, grass there again. All right, what should we do in the background? Let's do something with, uh, how about this rolling hills? This is called the soft hill. what now is the time that I will do some masking but it'll be very minimal okay I'll just kind of uh, rip paper towel roughly in the configuration of this rooftop here again why don't we wipe this off a little bit remember like we did with the uh, pine row maybe this will make a transition into this a little bit more graceful but it's supposed to be it's supposed to transition into that without doing any wiping off. So if you wipe it off, it'll be even more, uh, I don't know, graceful a transition potentially. But again, you don't really need to. All right, so we have that background hill. Um, why don't we do something here? Let's create a little bit of a separation between the background and the foreground. Okay. Well, how do you do that? Let's take uh, a tree stamp. All right. Where's my black ink? Let's do something like this. Here's these trees right here. How about this? I'll put this a little bit in front of that uh, old barn stamp. Kind of like so. I'll have some more down here. Like that. Like that. All right. Now, as far as that separation goes between kind of background and foreground, let's do something like this. Let's create a little bit of a mask, like so, and I'll use the smaller portions, or the, just the top portions of these trees like that. Moving off into the distance, mask off that barn again, and I'll go for it. some of these, just using a little bit of the tips of the uh, tree like so. Okay. Going through my head right now, I'm trying to decide if I want to use um, oh, something like some taller pines in the foreground. Eh, maybe not use this one again. Now let's push the space a little bit more. Let's use those reeds again. I could have used really anything, okay? There's a lot of possibilities. A few reeds to the left and right. What do we have? 
visual lead in, okay? And it's also framing by putting something like that in there. So we create a little bit of an opening. And where does our eye go to? Right to that structure right there. And again, you can put something up there in the sky if you want to. All right. Um, there's our foundation here. Um, hmm. Let's do something like this. Let's put. Um, let's put this windmill somewhere in here. Okay. It's kind of grown over at the base of it. Take off some ink off the base, and I'll put this around right around here, maybe. That. Hmm. I don't think I've ever had this uh, horse drinking out of a pond. Maybe I don't know. I don't remember. Wiping off a little bit of the feet, so it's kind of standing in the grass a little bit. Where would this uh, horse go? Would it go here? If I stamp it up here, we're saying that that horse is as tall as that, because it'd be on the same kind of horizontal plane, right? So if I move it down, how big is it in relation to this? If it's above this, then we're saying that that horse is, you know, this is a really tiny windmill if I do that. So if I put it down here, it means that it's closer to us, right? So let's try that. So maybe we'll put it roughly about like so. I mean, there's not like a, you know, a sixteenth of an inch tolerance or something like that. It could just be anywhere down here, and it would look fine. But that's where it went. Yeah, he's drinking out of the uh, thing. It's a horse that you know was once domestic and that has since uh, gone wild through generations of uh, whatnot. They have left it there. All right, let's not create such a deep amount of space right here. Let's go with the smaller reeds right here in the foreground just to create a little bit of a framing effect with a foreground element. It's a little bit darker, which kind of creates this kind of vignette type of feel. And if some of those reeds do go up into that horse, it doesn't mean it's sparing the horse, you know, because it's much lower, so it means it's much closer to us, okay? So we have something like that. And again, I've left room up here um, for some additional imagery uh, that can be used up there. Um, hmm. I was gonna say, I, I was gonna stamp a mountain back there. Let me pause and grab that. Uh, okay, here's the Rocky Peaks. Let's do a little compare or contrast between um, soft hills and kind of more of a, a distant uh, Rocky Peak type of situation. Let's do the same thing that we did with the, um, the Pine Rose stamp, though. Let's really take a lot of that off. Now, I gave it a really firm, you know, impression, okay, which would be the a firm ink removal, and let's wipe this off on the base here. If this stamps kind of lighter, what you're saying is that it's kind of more distant, you know, the lighter it stamps out, too. Now on the other one, it just, and it didn't represent the base of the trees aren't more distant, but you're saying that it's kind of sitting in a little bit of a, I don't know, atmosphere or whatever. But it's kind of just to, you know, you didn't want to obscure what was going on in the foreground. Now, that's the same thing with this. I don't want that, you know, that um, windmill to be too obscured. Okay, so well, that being said, maybe I'll take off a little bit more of this one. We'll focus it kind of more wiped off on the base of it, though, like some kind of lower line um, mist or haze. Okay, something like that. I don't need to mask off that windmill, though, because it's solid black, okay? But 
But I do need to mask off this um, barn, though. Okay, let's go like this. It might look kind of interesting, too, because there's something that's kind of pointy about the old barn, and uh, you know, there's certainly some kind of uh, peaks of the uh, of this uh, mountain back here, so it kind of reiterates that same type of shape going back here. We need something back here, though, don't we? Let's do that again. Let's take this one off really good, okay? Give it a really strong impression because maybe this one will represent something even farther back. Okay. All right. I wiped it off the base of it like that. And I'll mask that off like so. into that cabin a little bit, but no big deal, because it'll be colored brown. All right, there's your foundation there. And if you wanted to, if you, you can put some trees or something like that out there if you wanted to. But that's your foundation right there. All right. Oh, compare, contrast. It feels different, you know? I would say this one to this one. It looks like a completely different state. In fact, okay. What have we done? We've done. Uh, have I only done two stamps here? No, three. Okay. All right, cabin. Cabin. Uh, maybe cabin in the woods. Who knows? This one right here. This is the cabin. It's just called cabin. It's there's a larger version of it, but the larger version is just called Cabin Large. This one's just plain cabin, okay? All right. Um, you can do all kinds of things. Like I said, you can do whatever you want with any one of these um, images. Let's do something with this uh, dirt road, okay? We had, like, water leading up to a mill. How about a road leading up to kind of our destination? You know, this case it's the cabin, so. Uh, I tend to like to keep things a little more rustic. It's not like a paved road or something like that. Although someone has asked me for cityscapes, you know. A lot of, you know, I don't know how that one would go. A lot of harder lines and everything like that, you know. And I try to avoid hard lines because of the overlapping aspect of uh, the blending process, you know in terms of ease, but um, eh, it might be kind of an interesting uh, kind of concept or something to do. All right, let's go. This is the larger dirt road, so let's do this one um, vertically. So it's a little bit more space. Okay, there's my dirt road. And... Where would that cabin look good? Right here? Maybe they see that road kind of just goes right past the cabin, right? So maybe, you know, maybe there's there's other houses up the road, right? Or I could put it, you know, just going directly to that, you know, cabin door or something like that. But let's say that this cabin is kind of one of the uh, locations along that old road, you know, where people would have built and settled back when, you know, having access to you know, some kind of infrastructure, even if it is just kind of a, uh, you know, a basic road, okay? So we have that. All right, I just need to keep my sedge filler stamp right next to me because I'm going to be using it a lot. And filling in with the sedge filler stamp. Uh, maybe I should have left it like that. Maybe it's going over a hill and into the background like that. Um, let's put some more trees. These trees are very similar to the trees on the design. This is the oak rose stamp. 
let's do something here. Let's mask this off and say, we'll say that that road kind of goes over a little bit of a dip. So I'll have these trees on the other side of that area. Okay, see that? That road goes right through that space in the trees. I could have other trees here in the foreground if I want to as well. Do I want to though? Yeah. You can do other types of trees, you know, when you go out in nature. I don't know, there's certain areas where it's, you know, dominated by one type of tree, but um, usually it's a collection of a different, you know, different types of trees, the whole ecosystem. All right, there's a tree right there. Kind of creates, you can create, you know, a bit of a corridor, kind of a visual corridor for your viewer. Okay, oops, something like this. I wouldn't put too many reeds down here. If you did, maybe a little off to the side or something like that, because we have this road right here. We put a bunch of grass right here. We're saying that we're blocking off this road, okay? So it really wouldn't have it, you know, here, here. All right, so we have this area up here. I mean, if you want to, you can put some kind of, you know, sky figure. You know, the blue clouds would look good again, or kind of be interesting. We haven't done kind of a nighttime scene yet. Um, let's do something like that. Let's take the eerie moon. Kind of wipe off the edges a bit. I have the design where it's really streaky like that. You can see these lines in the uh, design itself giving it kind of that hazy type of feel. Okay, I just stamped this out in black, but let's put this right up here. Let's say that the, uh, the moon is coming right kind of in between there. Let's say something like that. There's a nice foundation for your cabin stamp. Okay. Where does your eye go to? Probably goes right to the cabin. It leads in, goes right to the cabin, looks at the uh, moon, I think, and probably goes back to the uh, cabin as kind of a final visual resting point, visual destination, you might say. <laughs> now, if I put someone on the road, oh, let's see here. Okay, that being said, talking about um, kind of some visual, I guess, destinations, anchors, whatever you want to call it. Let's take this little figure. It's called the old man and uh, dog. Okay. Can really go anywhere on this, uh, but let's say that's that's their um, that's their home. Going home after a kind of a long day. And now where does the eye go to? Probably lands right there. It might go up there and sit there for a while and it probably goes up here and comes right back here. But we kind of create that uh, visual dialogue of uh, kind of travelers and probably their resting spot for the night. Okay. Um, I don't know. Father's Day's coming up. I don't know of anyone that grew up in a little cabin like that, but Maybe that would be a weekend cabin for someone that likes to go hunting or fishing or something like that, you know. What not? Um, okay, let's see here. Let's create a little fishing hole. We can do something with that cabin right there. Like I said, these are all interchangeable. You saw how the barn was used. This really isn't going to be really any different. Let's do it a little bit of a different foreground though, okay? Um, let's go with something like this. Okay, let's add that, let's add that um, cabin a little bit less. Uh, not 
used, but uh, a little bit less prominent, maybe? I don't know. It'll still be fairly prominent, you know. But we'll just use less of it, okay? I'll, I'll do this on a horizontal landscape format, okay? In terms of my configuration of it, you know, horizontal, vertical. Okay, let's go with something like that. Let's put this, let's just put this farther off in, in the setting, okay? Let's go with something like that. <laughs> it's not going to be a very large bond. It's still pretty small. I could have, I could have done more of it though. It's more like a vernal pool or something like that, but let's do something like that, okay? Let's create a little bit of a foreground using something like this. This is the boulders with lichen, okay? And let's put this right up here in the foreground. Today. Today's Wednesday. Uh oh, the gardeners are here. It's gonna get loud. I might have to pause this and finish it off, but anyways, I've kind of created these rocks down here. See that? When that lawnmower gets over here, I'm gonna pause for a while. Okay, let's go for some trees. It's a little bit different though, right? Than the other one with the pond used. And have a little bit of foreground here using these reeds, okay? So we're really layering the foreground here. Okay, something like that. Maybe we can put a little fisherman in here or something like that. Okay, I'm going to pause for a bit, but there's our setting as is. Okay. All right. Quick break. Okay, I am back, and it's been about at least seven hours. Uh, oh, I always hate getting uh, interrupted when I'm uh, <laughs> when I'm stamping. Um, Mother's Day just. Uh, passed by this last weekend, and uh, someone on the uh, Stamp Junkies uh, Facebook group said, I don't know, there was some kind of quote there or something like that. It said something akin to uh, their Mother's Day wish was to be kind of left alone in their uh, craft room. I don't know, that kind of reminded me of that. Um, and I've heard that before, you know, it's like uh, for one of our friends, their uh, Mother's Day, uh, or I don't know, Mother's Day, but birthday present was just to, uh, you know, to leave her alone, uh, take the kids for the day, if not weekend. <laughs> you know, where she can just get, you know, some, you know, kind of a alone time, recharging time. All right, let's see, let's put some more trees in here. I have to kind of remember where I was on this. All right, kind of foliating this area in here, kind of setting up a, uh, a general kind of a um, environment for, I was thinking, this little fisherman right here. I thought that'd be kind of an interesting uh, thing to do, maybe. <laughs> maybe for something like Father's Day. Okay little side type of note right here. You see these little fishermen with these fishing poles, you know. 
work. And you have to be careful about um, small types of uh, stamps, okay? I find it's not necessarily the center, but it's the center of the kind of the, mm, I don't know what it is, the area maybe? The center weight area of a stamp. Okay, the center would be like around the head, but if I stamp down, okay, now, I mean, this isn't like a precarious type of thing. I, I can hold it anywhere I want. I can hold it up top here, just as long as I give it the right amount of pressure while I, while I didn't. <laughs> but anyways, kind of find the center of the mass. See, there's very little on this fishing pole. What I'm getting is that you don't want to do something like this, all right, where that suddenly that fishing pole becomes, I don't know, some kind of like gigantic, uh, who knows what, you know. Um, so you want to find the center mass and give it, you know, even pressure, okay, like these two right here, and not put too much pressure on things like that are sticking up like that, you know, isolated, that, you know, because that would distribute the pressure too strongly in that area. So that being said, why don't you just do a test print before you do it and, you know, get some muscle memory going and figure it out, you know, where to press and uh, you'll be just fine. Okay, I'm wiping off the feet here because this little fisherman is going to be standing in that grass right there and I don't want uh, his feet to be kind of showing. And it's what he's going for, bass or whatever. Hopefully not some kind of invasia, in, invasive species watching these uh, videos on YouTube, like a, a carpageddon or whatever they call it, Asian carp, all these kind of invasive species all over the place. All right, so we have a little pond here, created a nice foreground up here. Yeah, it's a, it's a different spirit, you know, this is very similar to this. I mean, this, we could put the cabin in here, but Here's a little variation down here, you know, with these rocks and whatnot. It's a little bit more substantial in the foreground, but there's nothing wrong with this either, you know. Just with this grass sedge uh, cluster there, so everything's interchangeable. That you know, look at this. You can, that's the way that would look. You can see how things kind of blend together. I'm missing part of this tree here, but you know. That being said, look at that. You know, see how everything kind of just kind of blends together. So you can put that, I mean, that hill would be coming down here, but let's say there's, I'm making a much wider um, scene. Let's say that, I mean, this, you know, this would be more of the background like that or something of that sort. But you can kind of get the gist of just how these stamps blend together. You know what I mean? It should be very, very easy to, you know, to blend uh, your imagery together. Now this one's working with the, you know, but you can see I'm just talking about the more of the foreground here or something of that sort, you know? You can see how these things kind of mix and match. All right, okay, so, little, uh, I don't know, weekend, uh, cabin, retreat, whatnot. Okay, let me see, how many of these cabins have I done? Two, okay, two cabins there. Both the um, uh, landscape and um, portrait format, okay. Night, day, I don't know, this one could be anything, could be early morning, whatnot. This one's, you know, I mean, I, this one could be daytime. You could make that into a sun. It could be, you know, like a sunset or something like that. Or you can kind of create an interesting, or it could just be blue up there, you know, and it could be a daytime scene. You can do green grass down here. I see it more as like an interesting thing with like night. You, know, you can kind of keep this illuminated down here and put blue tones, cool blue tones or something like that around there. And uh, it'd be an interesting uh, kind of a, scenario. All right, let's see. We have our cabin with fence stamp. I don't think I've used that one yet, have I? I have to go back in here. Remember, it's, I haven't been here in uh, six hours. 
If I don't stamp for a couple days, boy, it feels like lately because I've been doing quite a few scenes and uh, videos. If I don't stamp for like a day or two, it feels like I haven't stamped for weeks. Okay, this is the cabin with fence. Um, let's see, I'm going through all kinds of different scenarios here. Um, let me see what I've already stamped out. Um, come up with something a little bit different, maybe, maybe or maybe not. Okay, let me see what we have here. Let's do a snow scene. Okay. Now, while this is Snowy Creek, well, that's the name of it, You, this could be whatever, a summer creek, a spring creek, it doesn't matter, it's really whatever you color it with. There's nothing so definitive that says that this has to be snow, you know, just like that snow pattern, I mean, it could be sand, you know, if you, if you color it kind of bluish, cool tones, it's snow. If you do it in uh, brown, then it's sand or dirt. If you do it in green, then it's grass. So everything's kind of, it, that's the way it is. And that's the way it um, should be when it comes to kind of your generic components of um, scenic stamping. On one hand, it's kind of um, different for people getting into stamping if they're kind of coming from kind of outlined images um, because you can kind of compose things you can overlap things and they're doing a lot of careful masking but we're doing this integration of different imagery um, in this manner it can get a little bit confusing at times as to what things have to be you know if we're coming from imagery that's really definitive you know let's say someone's doing um flowers or something like that you know or it's a rose you know it's you're not going to be really changing that rose into something else it's a rose you know you you'll feel there's all kinds of different applications for it but the imagery doesn't change but in scenic stamping you know this is spring winter fall, whatever. If I put a palm tree up here, then it's tropical. If I put a pine tree up there, then it's, you know, a pine forested type of thing. I could put, um, who knows, a gazebo up there, and this could be a backyard waterside bluff, you know, instead of something out in the wild, you know, so everything is really malleable that way in terms of what it represents. Okay, so let's see here. Let's take this cabin with fence here. I'll put it over here on the side. Let's put it a little bit higher up. I'll have some of those trees kind of kissing the top of the paper. Oh, I should have stamped it a little bit darker. All right, I'm missing some of those uh, trees in the background, but let's just say, okay, those trees are kind of farther off and they're off in the distance, you know, they're not as, um, defined. Okay, where did my... Oh, let's do something with this. Let's go in and reiterate some of those trees. Alright, that was a bit of an accident there. I didn't stamp that out. I didn't press it hard. Okay, let me blot some of this pine row off here. Let me wipe it off. Remember like that other one? Wiping it off kind of on the bottom quite a bit. As I move off, I'm taking off less, and let's go in here, and let's create some background trees, okay? Like something like that. So they're lighter, kind of moves up. It's like it's in a veil of mist back there, and we can say, well, so is that. Okay, so here we are with our kind of format, uh, winter format. Um, I could put some additional texture down, you know, with this... Um, Snow Texture Stamp. Let's try that. If you don't know what this is, by the way, this is Tack and Peel, and it's this material that has been permanently affixed to this, so that acrylic block, so that 
When you use an unmounted stamp, you don't have to mount it to a cling foam, and you certainly could, you know, and use just your basic acrylic block, but if you want to just use the rubber, it sticks to it in a temporary mounting method. Okay, and let's lay down some, uh, some of this texture in here. You can do multiple impressions of it. You know, right, if you take off too much, you know, you'll want to re-ink it, but... Okay, something like that. So it's just a little bit more kind of graceful of a, of a texture than, say, something like the Sedge Filler, which represents something more grassy. Okay, tag and pill, you just put this plastic back on there. And you can use your other side, or you can put your cling foam mounts on the outside and stamp it out. All right, this is a little thing called um, Tiny Rocks, a little image. And I'll put some little pebbly uh, textures in our snow. I don't know, I'm doing this kind of common texture around giving um, the scene a little bit of continuity, you know, between the various areas. I do like to use um, little textural stamps like this. So this right here, maybe I can do some of this in the foreground. As it trails off, maybe I can kind of ghost uh, some lighter impressions of it like that. So that as it moves off, it becomes kind of lighter. All right, tiny rocks, it's a fun stamp. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that there. Maybe I'll use it more later. Okay, um, let's see. What else do I want in here? Do I want a foreground fence? There is a fence back there. Let's, let's go ahead and try this. There's a little bit of grassy texture on there, but eh, that'll be fine. That was the old fence, and or fence, and this one's the old fence. <laughs> that yeah, it just kind of provides an interesting foreground again it's kind of the visual uh, entryway you know the lead-in kind of let the space opens where the creeks coming through of course um, hmm. let me see here this is a perfect spot for a little animal wouldn't it be. Usually we have a bunch of animals in it, but I don't think I have it here. Let me grab it. Okay, let's go with this one right here. This is called Buck. Buck Large, actually. Some of the, that's not a buck, it's a bull elk. And uh, I am not an expert. But that's what I named it. I might have misnamed it. Okay. I kind of wiped off the bottom of the feet again so it's standing in, you know, some depth within the snow. Okay. Like that. See that? And again, I, I don't know. For me, I like to have my animals kind of, if they're pointing a certain direction, if they're pointing, I'd like to have them pointing into the scene, so if it was facing the other way, I'd have it on this side, you know, kind of facing in. See this, you know, this is on this side of the scene, kind of facing in, like that. I think it's just, I don't know, like this animal right here, it's facing inward, so I put it on the left-hand side. Fisherman, 
you know, that cabin's facing this way, so I put it on that side. This is facing inward, you know, or to the uh, right, so I put him on the left. This one, uh, I should have put him over here. <laughs> But I didn't, so no big deal. All right. Okay, that was an example of the cabin with fence. Now, I mean, this cabin and fence, I mean, you, you can have it in here. Like I said, everything is interchangeable. You know, this could be, you could have the road kind of leading up to, you know, this cabin right around, you know. Actually, it'd be like that. Use the size no, it'd be like that. In relation to that, you know, the the, uh, the old man on the horse there. Um, but like I said, everything, all of these structures, you can do whatever you want with them. You know, they're no set thing. Oh, let me do something here. All right. Uh, two inches by four and a half. Okay. Large stamps, this is one of those other benefits of uh, seeing stamps, you know, I mean, if I had some image of some individual, it's an outline design, I probably wouldn't be using just the legs or something like that of it, you know, or, I mean, you could, you know, I mean, you could stamp smaller portions of, you know, something for what you want. You would never stamp like a half of a word stamp or a quote stamp, probably. But with scenic stamps, you know, feel free to, you know, really just uh, kind of cherry pick um, areas within the scene that you want for smaller um, projects. Okay, now this is a two by two inch piece of stamp board. You can look up stamp board online. You can go to our website and have an entire section devoted to uh, stamp board um, scenes and whatnot. But here's a little two by two and we can get that little cabin there color it up and whatnot, use that as a nice little embellishment. Some people take embellishments like this and they color in the scene or something like that and they put something like this, so it's this raised thing coming out of there like that, you know, and that's kind of an interesting graphic kind of a um, vehicle to create a little bit of an extra, uh, not detail, but, well, I guess it's a card detail, card, card construct maybe? That's kind of interesting, you know, when you start moving into uh, dimensions, okay? But let's take something like this. Let's say, here's this little cabin right here. I can color it in, okay? But even in the smallest of compositions, you can do similar types of um, compositional treatments, okay? Here it is, right here. Here's a little bit of foreground. I don't know, we have this little area up here. I can color it blue and whatnot. One of the benefits of a uh, stamp board is you can kind of go back in and scratch um, different types of details into it. I can have little stars up here. And we're talking about, you know, a two by two inch complete statement as far as um, a scenically stamped um, structure, format, composition. All right, now let me see here. Which one haven't we done? I don't think I've done the farm yet. Okay, this farm's a little bit, it's a much smaller um, element within the scene right here, okay? And I kind of designed it very sparsely so that you can go in and kind of color it. It's, it's a little bit more, it's not quite so realistic. It's more stylized, okay? We're talking about just kind of some general forms in the background. But, you know, everything is interchangeable, like I said. Let's do something right here. Let's create a little bit of a setting for it. And let's say the sedge um, filler stamp is being used more as a... Um, kind of a distant texture, okay? Now we have to, well, let's see, what do we want in the foreground? Let's, let's build something out. I 
Let's do something a little bit different. Okay, this is called the Sedge Cluster Small Stamp. Okay, let's let's say that there's the farm back there, and they have made their farm next to kind of a little creek, you know, because they want to have a you know pretty consistent water source. So three impressions like that are going across the base like that. And we'll fill in with some of the sedge filler stamp. And this farm was something more along the, you know, it was active back in the, uh, the 18, well, it's, I don't know, that's not really an 1800s farm, or I don't know, maybe it could be, but it's real grassy in there, so. Um, okay, now this, if I put it back up here, we're talking about, uh, you know, 90 foot, you know, uh, windmill. Okay, so if I bring it down here, it means it's closer to us, so that, um, as far as the relationship goes between these two, it's more appropriate, okay? Things lower on the horizon line or lower on the uh, composition represent things that are closer to us generally. All right, let's wipe off some of the base of this so it's really sitting in some of this grass. Right about, I'll go here maybe? I don't know. Could go anywhere, almost. <laughs> Within that range I'm talking about. There's no like, like I said, there's not, it's not like a 16 inch tolerance or something like that. And oh my gosh, you know, you completely stamped it, you know, uh, out of place or out of, uh, you know, out of the whatever, the ratio. Okay, now I did put on this stamp right here, I do have some pine trees in the back there. So maybe we can do some pine trees around in here. Perhaps, let's do something like that. All right, let's mask this off down here. Okay, I'm gonna have it, some of these trees kind of going into my grass. find it. Um, all right, let's see. Now let me clean this one off pretty good. I'm just going to be going for a couple of the pine trees off of this one. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe half of them. Okay, I've colored in the, that half right there. foreground, kind of an opening that goes back into that area. All right, let's do this again here. Um, kind of the wiping off like that, or stamping off and then wiping off the bottom here. Let's do something like this. Let's create um, some background trees. I'm going to stamp it really low so that the trees are smaller. Shorter, I guess. Not really smaller. See that? A little more distance, so they're lighter. Okay. Seems like we can use something back there in that background, though, doesn't it? 
Oh, let's just, okay, let's break out from the, uh, the black only, um, color. Did I do some, no, I did some blue on this one right here. Let's just do that again here. We're looking at this setting here and we're thinking, oh, that farm is in just a kind of a beautiful setting for those farmers there. Okay, I'm wiping out the top of this. I'll wipe up the bottom a little bit too. Maybe I'll mask off a little bit of those um, rooftops there and I'll come down like this. Okay. Beautiful little setting for that family farm back there. Um, Cow here is loving life. It's got all the grass he wants to itself. Actually, I have another one that would be really good in here too. Two other ones. It'd be good to add in there for a little bit of scale. And uh, grass is looking a little monotonous. I don't know. I wouldn't really see this like texture, you know. But I do like to add it in a lot of times tiny rocks. It just, I don't know, it, it, it just kind of breaks up the monotony of certain types of textures once in a while. And then it kind of stands out like this a little bit, but um, when you add in your colors to your grass, it'll all just kind of blend in a little bit more. Okay. So we have a little idyllic setting right here for the farm. Um, oh, in that farm, there's a nice migration of birds. the whole idea of this kind of the uh, ideal kind of a uh, setting here okay so that's the farm there but okay I hope that this little stamp sketch um, video class whatever has shown you that yeah, no matter what type of image you're working with. Now this was a water scene, of course, and so was that water mill, but you can pretty much, you know, use your imagery just about however you want it to be, and you can use it in all kinds of different settings. The same universal things kind of apply, you know. This is my winter scene, and this is, you know, <clears throat> more of a whatever scene with grass, okay? But, you know, if I stamped this, if I colored this whole thing blue, or light blues, really cool tones, this could look like winter to me. And if I stamp, you know, a bunch of grass around here, and green grasses and whatever, you know, browns and whatnot in here, that would look like spring. And I could do little gel pen dots in here and no problem, it's uh, suddenly a springtime type of uh, setting, you know, next to the cabin or whatnot. But 
just play around with things. It doesn't matter, you know, um, what type of size you're using. You can use the same types of imagery. We're just extending things out, you know, um, farther to each side. Okay. Really low on the horizon. Perfect spot for a, a quote stamp, right? More of a full setting, you know, something like that. Coming in, here's that creek again. The snowy creek. Different types of background hills, from something like that to um, this one right here. It has a different spirit, though, you know, I think when you uh, change certain elements around. It's a very similar composition, but just by changing that background hill, it probably, I don't know, it changes kind of the location of it, especially for someone that, you know, has some kind of uh, those kind of granite looking peaks in the background or whatnot. Some that has kind of more of the rolling hills like that. It might be more reflective of uh, a place that uh, reminds them of uh, some place, maybe, maybe where they grew up or something like that. Water types of elements, a little reflections down here. If there's a reflection of the cloud up here, then you'd probably have a reflection of that uh, water mill down here in the water as well. But this is one of those types of times where you just say, eh, you know, uh, we're going to suspend kind of reality, you know, for the sake of the card and, you know, for the sake of the enjoyment of making the card and not be slave to um, kind of, you know, too many technicalities or whatnot. So anyways, uh, structures, you know, when we take a look across each one of these, I think that, um, you know, unless it involves like a little character in here in terms of a, a living creature, you know, including people, the structures, I think, are the focal points to each one of these things, you know, something like this. My eye probably goes right to the, uh, that structure right there. It goes kind of to the doorway, I think, you know eye kind of goes in here and it enters in. I think you're going to go through that doorway right there and into that structure. This one right here, I think we kind of focus, you know, around in here probably as a visual destination, you know, or anchor point, focal point of the scene. Little thing back here, but I think we kind of go back there and then we kind of come back here to the cow, you know, there's this kind of dialogue going between these, certainly, because that has to relate to that one in the background. And this one right here, we have the visual lead-in coming up here. And where do we go? Where do we go right here? There's a little tip, so we probably come up there, but we kind of circle right back around and do that. So, I don't know, it's kind of fun, you know, when you think of uh, the visual path that your eye takes. It's what do you look at first and what do you um, land on as far as an anchor point, you know? In terms of the compositional um, kind of elements that are going in. So, I don't know, think about that sometime, you know, when you're looking at something, kind of uh, make a conscious effort to kind of reflect on what you looked at, and then that might affect how you approach your compositions, you know, and kind of directing your viewer's eye. You know, it's not just in the composition, but how you light things. So, I would probably, on a scene like this, if this is a moonlight scene, I would darken the areas around my moon. I'd have a little bit of a highlight, you know, on the rooftop here where it's reflecting the light, and I'd probably have like a spotlight down here. So I'd probably have it kind of darker on the outside, right out here. Probably get darker in here, and then darker on the outside down here. It's like an eight, and I did a, a video on this, um, I don't know, some time ago, maybe a year by now, but it kind of focused on some of the very things. I would leave the moon the cabin, and that person down there illuminated, so kind of three points of light like that, okay? And what do those happen to be? They happen to be the, kind of the strongest elements within the scene that I want the uh, to stand out for my viewer, you know, and to kind of pull them in, you know, by having those areas of light, or areas lit within the scene. So it's really not lit, it's just that everything else is shaded. All right, so that is it there. I hope that uh, the structures um, uh, stamp sketch video comes in handy for you.
and um, I don't know, there are a lot of fun to do. Here's my little 2x2. Two two. I really feel like, of all these scenes right here, I, I kind of feel like finishing this one off, you know, putting a, scratching a couple little stars back in the, in the uh, sky there, so that would be really fun. Okay, thanks for watching.